Hello and welcome to Group A3's video on set identities. The first type of set identities are the identity laws. The first identity law tells us that the intersection of some set A and the universal set result in A. The second identity law states that the union of some set A and the empty set is the equivalent to the set A. Another type of set identity is the domination laws. The domination laws essentially have the opposite effect of the identity laws. The first law states that the intersection of set A and an empty set results is the equivalent of an empty set. The second part states that the union of set A and the universal set results in the universal set. Next we have the idempotent laws. They basically state that the union or the intersection of a set A and itself will result in the same set. So we have the set A and the union of set itself, set A, will then equal to just itself, set A. And the same is true for the intersection of the same sets. On to complementation laws. What this law states is that the complement of a complement of set A will just basically result in the set A. In other words, we can write it as the A with a line over the top to denote the complement of A. And if you take the complement of that, it is the double negative, therefore resulting in just the set A. Next, we have the commutative laws. These laws allow the ordering of intersections and unions to change while still yielding the same result. So what this means is that if you look on at the union of A and B, you can basically flip that around and say the union of B and A. Those, those statements are both equivalent. The same can be said about the intersection of set A and B. Now we have the associative laws. It tells us that the order of a series of unions or a series of intersections does not matter. No matter what order we take the unions of A, B, and C, we will get the same resulting set. Similarly, no matter what order we take the intersections of A, B, and C, we will get the same result. So looking at the example on the first line, we see that it doesn't matter if we take the union of set B and C and take the union of that set with A first, or we take the union of set A and B first and take the union of that set with C. The next type of set identities is the distributive laws, which work much like they do for multiplication that we all learn in algebra. It allows us to both expand and clean up complex set expressions and is important in proofs. So the first distributive law states that the union of set A and the set of intersection of B and C is the same thing as saying the intersection of the set of the union A and B and the union of set A and C. The second law states that the intersection of set A and the set of the union of set B and C is the same thing as saying the union of sets of the intersection of A and B and the intersection of set A and C. Probably the least intuitive of the set identities is De Morgan's laws. De Morgan's laws are important for dealing with set complements and also for manipulating expressions involving sets and their complements because they allow for the expansion and contraction of expressions involving complements. This law states that the complement of the intersection of set A and B is the same thing as saying the union of, of complement A and complement B. And on the other hand, it also says that the complement of 
the union of set A and B is the same thing as saying the intersection of complement A and complement B. The absorption laws are essentially explained by their title. They show how a set can be absorbed by another set by combining a union and intersection. So one of the absorption laws states that the union of set A and the set where of the intersection A and B is the equivalent of just the set A. And then the second absorption law states that the intersection of set A and the set of the union set A and B equals again set A. Lastly we have the complement laws. To show this graphically, the first complement law states that the union of A and its complement will equal the universal set. So we have the set A and then the complement which is everything but A and then we take the union of that. So the union is A plus the complement of A which we get here. We have A and the complement of A as well, which is everything else. This is the equivalent to a universal set. The second complement law states that that the intersection of A and complement A is the empty set. So again, we have the set A and we have the the complement of A, which is everything else. The intersection of complement A and set A is when those two sets have the same elements. But since there are no elements that intersect, it is the same thing as saying that it's equal to an empty set. Now that we've learned about all the different set identities, let's start working on a problem. Prove the first domination law, which states that the union of set A and the universal set is equivalent to the universal set. We can represent the union of set A and the universal set by saying that th there is an x such that x is an element of A or x is an element of the universal set. But because we know that x is a, an element of the universal set, we can simplify the expression by saying x is an element of A or true. But because everything or with a true turns out true, we can then further simplify the expression to say there is such an x that is true, which then gives us the universal set. Now on to problem 1b, which is to prove prove the second part of the domination law, which states that the intersection of set A and an empty set is equivalent to an empty set. So like we did in part 1a, we can, we can represent the intersection of set A and an empty set by saying that there is an x such that x is an element of A and x is an element of an empty set. Now an empty set does not contain anything so x cannot possibly be in the empty, empty set which means that we can simplify the expression to be x is an element in A and false. When any element is ended with a false we get a false. So this can be sim further simplified to there is such an x that the same as false. Therefore, that is equivalent to an empty set. Now the second question asks if you conclude that A equals B if A, B, and C are sets such that first, the union of set A and C equals the union of set B and C, and second, if the intersection of set A and C equals the intersection of B and C. As it turns out, both statements are actually false. For the first problem, 
let's say that set A contains the elements 1 and 2, B contains the elements 2 and 3, and C contains the elements 1, 2, and 3. Now the union of A and C would then be 1, 2, 3, and the union of set B and C would also be 1, 2, and 3, which means that both of those unions are equal to each other. However, set A and B are not equal to each other. Now looking at the second problem, let's say that set A includes the elements 1, 2, and 3, and B includes the elements 2, and 3, while C also includes the elements 2 and 3. Now the intersection of A and C is 2 and 3, and the intersection of B and C is also 2 and 3, which would make the second statement true. However, however sets A and B are not the same, because the set A includes the element 1, 2, 3, while B only contains 2 and 3. So therefore, both statements 1 and 2 are not true.